uh, continuing our little mini-series on the Psalms. So I'll just start by reading this Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So I think probably that Psalm 23 is the most well-known psalm in the Bible. And I suspect a lot of non-Christians have heard it or at least recognized some of the verses in it. Indeed, some of the lines have been used in plenty of secular songs. And this psalm is the most used reading at Christian funerals. And there's also a Jewish custom that this psalm is recited by those keeping watch over the body before a funeral, and then again in a funeral service. The reason Psalm 23 is used at so many funerals is because of the comfort it gives. It would be so wonderful if God would simply promise us that there would never, we would never have to go through any difficult times. But we all know that life offer, offers us more than its fair share of hardships. The Bible is constantly telling us that there will be difficult times in life. And Psalm 23 voices such a warning. It does not say God will keep you from danger. But rather, it describes that there will come times when we feel like we are walking through a dark, dangerous valley. A valley of the shadow of death, as one translation puts it. But what the word of God does make very clear is that as we move through such times, God is with us. God is there to comfort us and sustain us. And so we need not fear. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for your rod and your staff comfort me. Psalm 23 is one of the few psalms that are called psalms of trust or psalms of confidence. Now, of course, we see expressions of confidence and trust throughout other types of psalms. And a couple of weeks ago, when we were looking at lament psalms, we saw that they normally end on a note of trust. So for example, Psalm 13 ended with, But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. The difference in a psalm of trust, like Psalm 23, and a lament psalm, is that the writer is not requesting God to deliver them from their enemies or a situation they find themselves. There's no anger towards God, and there are no questions of God. But rather, the writer simply expresses confidence that God does save. Let's look a little closer at our psalm. We see a powerful image of God's loving kindness in this psalm as God is presented to us as a shepherd. The image of God as a shepherd is well known to us, and we see it come up throughout the Bible. The shepherd is a guardian and a carer, and indeed the classical picture of King David himself, the young shepherd who fought off wild animals to protect his father's flocks. There's plenty of examples to pick from, and I'll just pick a couple. Psalm 80 says, Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. Psalm 100 says, 
Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. But it's not just in the Psalms that God is described as a shepherd. In Genesis, the first book of the Bible, Jacob says, God has been my shepherd all of my life. And the prophet Isaiah says of God, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs into his arms and carries them close to his heart. So we see the image of God as a shepherd running throughout the Bible. Our psalm today, Psalm 23, starts by telling us that God is our shepherd and that he will look after us, providing physical nourishment in the green fields and the running streams. But more than that, there's a spiritual element. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths. Verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now this stood out to me because it suggests the shepherd is carrying two things, a rod and a staff. The Palestinian shepherd of the time would normally have carried two implements. The first, a rod or a club, which would be used to fend off wild beasts and a staff or a crook which is used to guide and control the sheep. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So this is an image of both protection from danger and of God's guidance in our lives if we choose him to be our shepherd. The role of the shepherd is to protect the sheep and to guide them. Imagine a sheep without a shepherd going through a dark valley, not really knowing where they were going with no protection from the wolves. But even in times of trouble, God is with us. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even when we're surrounded by enemies, the writer of this psalm is not dismayed, but has confidence in God's love, protection, and provision. This is a psalm of supreme confidence in God, which is why it's used so often in funerals. It draws us into this, that same trusting relationship with God. It does not promise that life will be easy. In fact, it suggests that we will at times be surrounded by enemies and it will feel like we're walking through a dark valley. But God is our shepherd. He is with us always, protecting and guiding us. And that in the end, and in the end, we have the promise of eternal life. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The hope God offers is that whoever believes in him and follows him will not die, but will live with him forever. So we've seen this image of God as a shepherd running throughout the Old Testament, especially in Psalm 23. And it's an image that Jesus takes upon himself and is attributed to him by his disciples. So Jesus in the Gospel of John says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. The sheep listen to my voice. I call my own sheep by name and leave them. I have come that they may have life 
and have it to the full. So holding this image of Jesus as the good shepherd in your mind, I'm going to read the psalm again. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guide me, guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for, before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, if you have any questions about this psalm or any other psalm, as long as they're not too difficult, Taryn, then I'll be happy to <laughs> see see what I can come up with. Thank mm -hmm. you.